Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our Eucharist this evening on Tuesday, the 6th of October. Happens to be the day that we commemorate William Tyndale, who was a very significant translator of the Bible into English. And um, it's not that often I get to wear my red stole, but we wear the red stole for martyrs. And sadly, William Tyndale was martyred for his faith. He was martyred for um, translating the Bible from Latin into English so that ordinary people could read the Bible for themselves. And that's why he ended up being executed. So that's why I'm wearing the red stole this evening. So, um, yes, it's nice to nice to get it out on occasion. Um, so that's what we're celebrating this evening and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about Tyndale as we get into the service. Paul's just checking that we're uh, online and we are and hopefully you can hear me okay. Uh, I can, I'm just checking again ever since that time when you couldn't hear me I panic every week when we, when we have this service but uh, it's nice to welcome you to our service this evening and the words will come up on the screen so just join in as you feel comfortable at home. So let me just get my... Uh, PowerPoint up. Let's see what I'm doing. There we go. So let's begin our service. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. So we pray together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we take a moment to acknowledge where we have not acknowledged God, where we have gone our own way and we've let God down and ourselves. So we take a moment to call to mind those things that we regret We have not always worshipped God, our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit, our Guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So the collect for William Tyndale. Let us pray. O God, by whose grace your servant William opened to the poor and unlearned the treasures of your word, grant that we may find in scripture such a vision of your glory that we, like him, may be your faithful servants unto death. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, whom by the power of the Spirit you raised to live with you, his God and Father, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. All who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, but wicked people and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving others and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. 
I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong in the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So William Tyndale, I'd like you to imagine living in a world where all the services at church are completely in Latin, a language that you don't understand. Most ordinary people wouldn't have had an education, wouldn't be able to read and write in English, let alone in Latin. And the Bible at the time of Tyndale had been translated by St. Jerome into into Latin, into the Vulgate translation. So the original Bible is written, the Old Testament's written in the Hebrew language and the New Testament in Greek language, ancient Greek. And it was translated by St. Jerome in the third century into Latin, into what we call the Vulgate translation. And that was the main version of the Bible across the Christian world. And in the church, there would have been a huge, big Bible, all in Latin, that would have been interpreted by the priests. So it wasn't accessible to ordinary people. And Tyndale was born in a world like that. He was born in Gloucestershire in about the year 1494. And he studied first at Magdalen Hall, which is now Hertford College, Oxford, and then at Cambridge. He became determined to translate the scriptures from the Greek directly into contemporary English, but was thwarted in this by the Bishop of London. So William settled in Hamburg in 1524 and never returned to England. When the first copies of his translation arrived in England in 1526, it was bitterly attacked as subversive by the ecclesiastical authorities. He spent much of the rest of his life making revisions to his work, but also writing many theological works. His life's work proved good enough to be the basic working text for those who at the beginning of the following century were to produce what became known as the authorised version of the Bible or maybe you might know it as the King James version of the Bible. Of course King James came a long time afterwards. William Tyndale was born during the reign of Henry VIII. He was eventually arrested in 1535 and imprisoned in Brussels on charges of heresy. And he was strangled and then burnt at the stake on this day in 1536. His last words were, Lord, open the King of England's eyes. He wanted the King of England to recognise that the Bible should have been made available to ordinary people in a language they could understand. It took a long time for his prayer to be answered. But of course, by the time of King James I, We had the authorised version of the Bible and a proper version of the Bible in English. I just want to read to you, Tyndale had a massive influence on the English language because the King James Version of the Bible had a huge influence on the English language. And let me just share with you some of the phrases that were translated from the Greek by Tyndale. because These will all be familiar to you. My brother's keeper, knock and it shall be opened unto you, a moment in time, fashion not yourselves to the world, seek and ye shall find, ask and it shall be given you, judge not that ye be not judged, the word of God which liveth and lasteth for ever, let there be light. The powers that be. These are phrases, aren't they, that we see in the newspapers and we see still online today. The salt of the earth. When did you describe somebody recently as salt of the earth? It's one of his phrases. A law unto themselves. It came to pass. It's a sort of a storytelling phrase, isn't it? And it was that was coined by Tyndale. This is all him translating the Greek, of course, from the Bible. The signs of the times. It's another of his phrases. 
filthy lucre comes from from Tyndale the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak and finally the phrase we live move and have our being that phrase that's used um, in the book of Acts we in which we live and move and have our being so and, and there's lots more um, besides that but you can you can basically see Tyndale's influence in the authorised version of the Bible. His version of the Bible was being passed around in secret. Um, it was contraband. If you got caught with a copy of Tyndale's Bible um, at the time of Henry VIII, you probably would have been, been arrested for heresy and you could well have ended up being burnt at the stake as well. Um, so it's strange to think that it was a massively radical thing to translate the Bible into people's ordinary English. Um, and yet, now, of course, we completely take for granted that we can pick up a Bible from our bookshelf and read it for ourselves in a language that we can understand. So we've got an awful lot to thank Tyndale for. And of course, he ended up giving his life for what he believed in. Uh, he gave his life for that belief that ordinary people should be able to know the scriptures for themselves and should be able to have a relationship with God for themselves. So we thank God for Tyndale today. And the next time you say, someone's the salt of the earth or you use the expression let there be light then remember that that came from William Tyndale so we're coming to our prayers of intercession and um, I know that I think there's a lady called Kirsty that's watching this evening and her husband is currently in intensive care at Chesterfield Fortunately today he was taken off, he's been on a ventilator but he was taken off the ventilator today and we've been praying for Richard and so we will be including him in our prayers this evening. So let us pray. May your peace shine among us and your love set us free. Lord we pray. Keep us persevering in faith and set in our hearts the desire for your kingdom. Help us to keep hoping for the future. Help us not to despair or lose heart as we go through this difficult time. Help us to fix our eyes on Jesus. Guide your church along the way of the gospel. May your Holy Spirit keep her welcoming be with all churches who are reaching out to people in different ways on Facebook, over the telephone and other forms of connection. We pray for the leaders of the nations. May they have the will to promote justice and freedom. Might they have wisdom as they make decisions on managing the pandemic. And we pray for all those involved in the search for, for a cure for COVID-19. O oh Christ, you have taken our weaknesses upon yourself and taken char charge of our illnesses. Support those who are going through trials. And we pray especially this evening for Richard in intensive care in Chesterfield. And we pray for his wife, Kirsty. We pray that he will be able to come home soon and you will be with the doctors who are caring for him. And in a moment's quiet, we will bring before God those known to us who are in need of our prayers. Give them all courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We entrust to God, our families and friends, all who have asked for our prayers and all those who pray for us. And as we think of William Tyndale, we pray for all those involved in translation work around the world. And we pray especially for Bible translators and for those who interpret the scriptures. And we pray for our country, our region and our villages, that the Christians there may be witnesses to truth and creators of unity.
bless us, Christ Jesus. In you alone our hearts find rest and peace. Amen. So now we come to share the peace with one another in a virtual way and with those in our households. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all at home. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Bread. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord <clears throat> our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St James, St John the Baptist, William Tyndale and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So let us pray for the coming of the kingdom in the words our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. 
because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. The body of Christ, broken for us, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for us, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Body of Christ. The blood of Christ. So now we have our act of spiritual communion. We should take a moment to be in God's presence. And we pray together. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. <coughs> Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bow our heads to receive God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship this evening. It's good to be praying with you and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Um, our next service in church will be this Sunday at Clown Church at 10 o'clock. And straight after the service, we're going to be having our annual meeting where we can elect our new church wardens and PCC members. I will try and keep the meeting as short as possible. But if you do come along on Sunday, please do stay behind um, after the service so that we can have our annual meeting as well and get all that business sorted out. So hopefully see you soon. Um, obviously, usually, as usual, the service on, at Clown on Sunday will also be live streamed on Facebook and then be put up onto YouTube later in the day. See you soon, everybody. Take care.